the topic of chapter 11 is green taxes. That is taxes on pollution to achieve pollution reduction. The idea of taxes on an externality in general come from the, uh, the economist A.C. Pigou, who wrote a book in 1920 called The Economics of Welfare. And so we often call these taxes Piguvian taxes. So let's go back to a graph we had a long time ago. This is a polluting output. And we have the firm's marginal net private benefit curve, MNPB. The dollars per unit of output is the axis. And we know that the firm wants to go here. We call this point Q pi. That's where, uh, where profit is maximized. But now suppose that the government imposes a tax on this output. And we're going to suppose that the tax schedule with this vertical axis, dollars per unit of output, is horizontal. What that means is that it's a tax like um, 5%. So for every, uh, it, the firm sells one unit at a price of uh, $10, then it has to add an additional 5% to what it collects from the consumer and give that to the to the government. And the question that we're going to pose is how does this affect the firm's decision on what output to produce? Because it's actually not going to stay at Q pi. Actually, I think I'm going to change uh, the way I draw the Q for a lowercase just to make sure that it's clear that this is just that this is just one firm. It's not. Sometimes I use lowercase q for one firm and the capital Q for the entire industry. The firm isn't going to stay at q pi now um, because the what the firm is, is, is going to be interested in is marginal net private benefit minus the tax because the tax is essentially a marginal, an extra marginal cost now. And at q pi, marginal net benefit is zero. And so marginal net benefit minus the tax would be a negative number, and the firm wouldn't want to produce where this is negative. The firm would want to, to decrease output. And I claim that it would go to here. So this new level, call it Q prime, marginal net benefit minus the, marginal net benefit is equal to the tax, and so marginal benefit marginal net benefit minus the tax is zero. And so the firm wouldn't want to go beyond that point because beyond that point to the right of, of Q prime generates marginal prime benefit minus tax, which is negative. To the left, marginal prime benefit minus tax is still positive. For example, it's positive here. That's the gap, or it's positive here, the gap between M and PB and the tax. So for those levels of output, it's still worthwhile to increase output and so, so my claim is that this is the way the firm would, re would respond to the tax. This is pretty intuitive. What it says is that if the government poses a tax on, on a firm, the firm is going to respond by producing less output. So a tax on output, you get less output. This then raises the question, how can the government use a tax to get the firm to produce the socially optimal level of output. 
So now we draw in the MEC curve, which represents the willingness and ability of the pollution victims to pay to reduce pollution. And we have our M MMPB curve just as before. Here's Q pi. And you'll recall that Q star, the socially optimal level of output, is here. To the left of Q star, the value of producing output, which is MNPB, is above the social cost of producing output, which is MEC, and so society would want that output to produce be produced, but to the right of Q star, output is generating such high external costs that from society's point of view it wouldn't be worth it because the marginal external cost is greater than the marginal net private benefit. So that's why Q star is the socially optimal level of output. Now, before Pigou, what economists would say is the free market wants to go to Q pi, socially optimal is Q star. So what you need to do is pass a law. The government needs to pass a law saying that it's illegal to produce more than Q star units of output. And then if the law is always followed, then you solve the problem. Now, again, we talked about the coast there approaches in a previous chapter, but I'm not going to repeat that, that discussion. I don't, I don't think, as you know from that discussion, that that's particularly relevant to the, to the real world as a, as, a, as a way of getting you from Q pi to Q star. So, 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 the, so before Pigou, it was a so-called command and control. idea you just make Q greater than Q star illegal. I should say that the term command and control is a, is a modern term but it, it describes the pre-Pigouvian ideas that the government doesn't have any choice it just has to make has to make uh, output less than Q star illegal. But Pigou said that using a tax like here, we can get the firm to reduce output. And that's what we want. We want the firm to reduce output from Q pi to Q star. So then the question becomes, how high should you set the tax to get the firm to produce Q star? To answer this question, we don't need to look at MEC. All we need to do is look at the MNPB curve. What the diagram on the left taught us is that if you have an MNPB curve and you want to find out how the firm responds to a tax, you draw in the tax, and then where the tax line intersects the MNPB curve is where the firm is going to want to go. So all we need to do is apply that insight to the right-hand diagram. We, it, in other words, we sort of, let me use the left-hand diagram first. If, if you want to go backward, if you know that you want to hit Q star, then you go up to the MNPB curve and over, and that'll tell you what the tax rate needs to be in order to get Q star. So we simply do that on the right. We know we want to get uh, I, I sorry, I, I, I said it wrong. On, on the left, if we want to get Q prime, then we go up to the tax line and over, and that horizontal distance, uh, the, the little tax, is the tax that'll get Q prime. So now on the right hand diagram, if we know we want to get Q star, then I can find a tax that will generate Q star by starting with Q star, going up to the MNPB curve. There's the MNPB curve. Forget MEC, that's not relevant here to the firm's behavior. We go to the MNPB curve and then over. And so that would be the amount of the tax. So let me indicate that in a different, slightly different way. Not 
socially optimal tax. So the firm doesn't care at all about MEC, but the firm cares about the tax. And while without the tax it was at Q pi, with the tax it's going to be at Q star. So this is a simple way of determining what the socially optimal tax is. What we're going to do in the next video is something that uh, a, a subject that we haven't broached before. Up until now, output and pollution have been proportional to each other. So that 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 it, I'll say output was proportional to pollution. We are basically treating output and pollution, if not synonymous, but linked together. In the next video, we're going to, for the first time, introduce what we'll call abatement, which is going to break the link between output on the one hand and pollution on the other hand. It's going to say, for example, that the firm might be able to produce the same amount of output as before, but less pollution if it adopted an abatement technology. Okay. So well, that's, uh, that's just a short introduction to the next video.